Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, the other day I was having surgery, and the anesthesiologist, he tripped, and he gave himself a dose right in the forehead. <laughs> what a numbskull. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at McGowan and Lombardi's The Great War Card Game from Lombardi Studios. <laughs> We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In McGowan and Lombardi's The Great War, the card game from Lombardi Studios, two players take on the roles of either the Central Powers or the Allied Powers during the conflict from 1914 to 1918. Now essentially, this is a card game where you have a number of cards which can actually be used as regular playing cards if you wish, but you're going to go ahead and determine exactly what cards you're playing with, for what scenario you're doing. There's even a War of the World scenario you can add into this. But you go ahead and you each create kind of your own nationality deck. Now the standard game is 10 rounds. You're going to set the round tracker off to the side. And then you've got kind of your, your uh, paper mat that has the spaces for the various decks. Of course, you've got your nationality decks, you've got neutral decks, you've got bonus decks, you've got all the different decks that you're going to play with in the game. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a number of cards at the beginning of the game for each side. Now, before you actually begin to play cards, however, you do have a random event card. You play a random event card, and you go ahead and see whatever happens. It may affect both of you adversely, or maybe just one of you adversely. There may be some advantages, but you play that random event card. You can also discard a, I think it's a joker or a bonus card, to kind of negate the effects of that random event on you. Now, each turn, you're going to go back and forth between defender and attacker. Now, the, att uh, the defender, rather, is going to go ahead and start playing cards out first. Now, they can play... Um, as many cards as they want, but they have to play at least one nationality card. And what you do is as you play the cards out, you'll notice you have other cards that can link. They work with your infantry or your artillery, and they allow you to kind of chain cards. Now, it's possible the other player can interrupt that, but generally you're going to go ahead and chain out your cards. And you don't have to play all the cards you can chain. You're just playing a number of them. Now, just because you're actually playing the card, it does not mean the card activates. You can go ahead and activate its effect, or you can wait and use it later, in which case you can kind of tap it to show that it's been activated. After the defender has placed out his line, the attacker can go and he can start placing out his cards. Now the attacker, he too, must place a nationality card at some point, and he must place an attack card. It's got the attack icon on it, arrow going forward. He places that card out as well, and he can start chaining his cards as well. Uh, once you're finished, then you go uh, back to the defender for a second round of combat. They can go ahead and they can lay out their cards, and the attacker can lay out his cards. Now, many of the cards you play may negate or cancel uh, opponent's cards, in which case they get flipped over. But there's other effects that can go back and forth that can, can get rid of some of their cards or, or have adverse effects on your opponent. Now, next you have the bonus card phase. Now, during the bonus card phase, you can only play jokers or bonus cards into your line. You can go ahead, you can do that to, again, try to strengthen your line. Now you have battle resolution. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to look at all the battle points placed on all of the cards in your line. Whoever has the highest uh, total, they are going to win that battle, and they can take their enemy's nationality cards and kind of put them into their captured deck. And that's points they're going to score. Now the winner may also place one of their own nationality cards that they've already played back into their hand, or they can place a neutral card from either any card they played or any card the opponent played back into their hand. 
Now on the turn track, you mark the winner of that particular phase, and you also go ahead and put down how many points they have captured in that phase. Next, you're going to have a draw phase. You're each going to be able to uh, draw your hand up, I think, to a total of 11 with a mixture of, of uh, nationality cards, uh, bonus cards, neutral cards. But then you can go ahead and discard down to nine. Your hand size, standard hand size for each round will be nine. Now, at the end of round five, you're pretty much going to reshuffle all the decks except for captured uh, nationality cards. You're going to reshuffle those and just kind of start it up, mixing up the decks once again. Now, after game turn 10, you're going to look and see whoever has the most battle points. You can see what kind of a victory you won in the rules sheet. Uh, but essentially, whoever has the most points wins. McGowan and Lombardi's The Great War. So this is a game, I, you know, I'd seen it online, uh, and I, I, I'm a sucker for a good you know, World War I game. I like that theme a lot. I mean, I like historical war games, and I like World War I games. I, I really do have fun learning about it and playing games set in the First World War. And this game kind of struck out to me, first of all, because I love the artwork. Roger McGowan did, I think, a lot of this artwork. It looks uh, great, um, and it's cool that each of the card decks are their own playing cards, right? Um, but this is essentially a trick-taking game. It's a trick-taking game where you're trying to play the most cards to beat the other side, but you've got to be careful because some of the cards that you play can have adverse effects uh, on your enemy. You can screw them over. So you don't want to play too many cards and lose, but you don't know. You may have a winning hand, and you've got to play them. And you've got to play them just right here, too. Um, and you've got the two rounds of combat, the bonus round. Well, I was playing it with Ray, and there were still concepts that we were kind of struggling with right up till the end that weren't intuitive. But once you figure out the basics and the flow gets going, and it took us a while to get going, but once we got going, we both really found a lot to like here. Um, it's, you know, this, it's a pretty simple game, and obviously it's very abstract being this, this, this kind of card game, but it's fun. Uh, you do have to invest some time into learning it. There is a learning curve here. It's only like one sheet of rules, and frankly, some of the way some of the cards are worded and, and some of the ideas in the rule book are not as clear as they needed to be. There are a few things we did house rule, but generally speaking, we did have fun with it. It, it, it generally speaking, it worked. And that's not necessarily something you want to hear from a game. You want to hear it, it totally works. Here, it, it, it's, it, as far as the rules and stuff, we were probably about 80, 85% there. There were still a few things that were, uh, we, we tried to find a BGG, we couldn't find it, we house ruled it. But again, I really like this. I mean, what we what we have here, I, I really quite enjoyed. Just as I say, that basic contest of how many cards do we play? Can we win this thing? Or am I just handing over my points, potential points to, to my enemy? It's really a good choice and good strategic choices throughout how you're going to play the cards and where you're going to play the cards. Some card, sometimes you don't have the cards you need to play, and it's just like, all right, screw it. And, and depending on who wins a round, that isn't necessarily going to be who wins the game. So you can actually be ahead, 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 and right up until the end, that may not matter. But it's a fun game. It's engaging. If you don't mind the learning curve, if you don't mind maybe some of the rules being a little wonky, uh, I think you'll get a kick out of it. I'm hesitant to say out and out buy it just because of some of those rules issues we had. But let me give it a try it before you buy it. And let me give this as a very, very positive try it before you buy it. I think, I think you'll like it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. I post some of my lectures on there as well. So please subscribe to that uh, channel. That would mean a lot to me. And also, please, if you get a chance, uh, click uh, the thumb for this video on Board Game Geek. That also helps us out. And if you are a big fan of the channel, I'd ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please consider clicking on the Super Thanks button here on the YouTube page. We would really appreciate it. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you something. I got a great autumn joke for you. But you probably wouldn't fall for it. Somebody help me!